What's going on, folks? How are you doing? I'm Adrian Three and I'm going to be doing the Red Dead Redemption 2 podcast. I understand a few of you probably won't have heard of me before, as we are on Red Bandit's channel as well this week, because we have him as a guest on the channel. And uh, I thought I'd just quickly say that we're doing this because it's pretty cool to talk about Red Dead. We'll be talking for about a half hour or so about all the stuff. And we have, <clears throat> excuse me, myself, uh, I root three in the line, of course. We have uh, Mr. Dean, known as Red Dead 2 videos. He is here as well. Say hello, Dean. Hello, what's up, Outlaws? And Everyone. we have Hazard as well, who is also a Red Dead guy. Say hello, Hazard. What's going on, guys? And of course, the guy that you all know as well, if you, you know, it's, it's a big name in Red Dead 2 at the moment, which is pretty cool uh, for everybody who does not know Mr. Red Bandit. Feel free to say hello. Guys, glad to be joining you guys today for this video. Excited. Definitely, it's going to be a good time. Happy to have you on, man. It's good. It's It's been a Very long much. time coming. Definitely, yeah. I, I wish I had have done it sooner, to be honest. I love collaborating with other people. So excited for the future as well. It's definitely something we should keep up with. So they can all look forward to more episodes with us all together, I can expect. For sure. Mm -hmm. And with more news ramping up for Red Dead 2, there's going to be a lot to talk about coming up very shortly because we've had little scraps so far ever since uh, ever since the trailer dropped in May, which was the last big thing we got. So I'm excited for something new to happen. That was so long ago now. <clears throat> It feels so long ago, because we've had nothing else. Come August 2nd, it's going to be three months. Yeah. A quarter of a year. <laughs> the countdown begins. It really does. So I guess one of the first pieces of news we should talk about in this video is just recapping on that complete official guide uh, that was that was released yesterday, or available for pre-order yesterday by Rockstar Games, posted on their newswire and available in their warehouse um, it seems pretty interesting. I don't know if you guys got an art book like that for GTA V. I never did. No, I didn't have anything like that. I mean, what struck, struck me um, straight off the bat was the fact that they've actually chosen a different publisher. I may be wrong in saying that, but they usually go with Brady games. Um, at least they did with the GTA games from GTA 3 and up. So for them to choose, I believe it's Piggyback now, Piggyback Books. Um, just screams to me that there's some sort of background thing going on there. And I know that Rockstar have previously mentioned how the mission structure is changing. So I have a feeling that may be something to do with it. Maybe it's they've hired Piggyback to publish it or whether it's some other story on that. But definitely interesting. For sure. Possible that Brady Games are one of the higher commission than they did before. Or more money. <clears throat> because they know how much these uh, these things usually make. Um so they, they may have asked for more from Rockstar, and Rockstar just went, <laughs> okay, that's fine. Uh, and then they just called these guys up. Uh, I actually bought the one, I, I'm convinced, I only just remembered it, there was one for GTA V. And uh, yeah. I picked that up, and it's basically what you'd expect. Artwork, photos, guides to certain missions, explanations, all the stuff you don't really need, but it's nice to have, like, I remember I used to spend like a little while just flicking through it. It's too big to like carry on a train or anything like that. Like you don't, you know, these things are usually like A4 sized, <clears throat> but you don't, you know, yeah, it's, it's nice to flick through or have it on a shelf or, you know, it's, it's nice to see them there. So like with Red Dead, especially and with all the visuals, they expect a lot of artwork. Like you'll be getting several like, Two page artwork type things and explanations of like locations and that sort of thing as well. I'm gonna cough them on a bit with me. I'm gonna mute my mic. The okay. awesome books, actually. I had one for GTA. Essentially, if, if it follows the, st the same structure and the same design, I mean, what we can expect if it does foreshadow that of GTA's strategy guides, normally we have like a, a breakdown on weapons, the statistics, uh, vehicles. Of course, in Red Dead, we won't have any supercars or anything, but you can definitely expect to probably see different breeds of horses and stats on them and things like that. And in regards to missions, it, they usually just tell you how you're supposed to play the mission. But since Red Dead 2 is changing that completely and you can so you know, quote by quote, you can choose how you do the missions. It's going to be interesting to see how that actually changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I never, like, personally, I never got one for GTA 5, but it does sound really awesome. Especially for Red Dead 2. Like, it's going to be very interesting. It'll yeah, it's work. Be very interesting. I mean, because if they go with artwork and stuff, it'll look great. Like, all the little photos of the landscape and stuff. Because that's the thing that I think will stand out most, 
is like, yeah, the gunplay will be cool and feel satisfying, but the way it looks, like, I like just in, in Red Dead Redemption, you can go to, like, anywhere on the map. I was saying this to Hazard the other day. You can go anywhere on the map, and as the mm-hmm. sun sets, it looks awesome. And as it rises, it looks awesome. And at night, yeah. you got all the stars, out, and you hear all the little crickets and stuff, and, you know, you're in stage like, yeah, yeah, the maps are always awesome. And you can do that in GTA Five as well, but there's something about just the, the countryside level of quiet in a Red Dead game that's really cool. Mm, definitely, the whole something they're doing. They're doing this one. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. completely different, changing everything that we know from previous titles from Rockstar. What we've seen from the trailers too is it seems like, you know, the atmosphere, just that whole vibe, like you were talking about, Rue, is going to be coming back. But I'm excited for just like the new locations and everything, and it's going to be nice to see this in the standard and the collector's edition of this official guide here about, you know, they have their dedicated maps chapter, it says. Um, and besides that, they have character art gallery, um, which I'm actually not sure how that differs from the standard edition, because on the standard edition, you have information about the missions and characters and then features about the vast and open world. So I don't know, like, I mean, I'm just hoping that this is a little bit different than what you can gather information about from the in-game you know so you can highlight the description of a horse when you want to buy one or if you, however you purchase a horse in red dead 2 either in the story mode or online i'm sure it'll give you some description like this is a black horse with a you know this mane and you can buy this saddle etc i just hope we don't see that same information in this complete official guide which i don't know the, if it's going to be the same or... usually spoiler build like they'll run down every, every oh, yeah. mission and every like this is what happens to this character and then you you'll be faced with it usually so like you just play the game but yeah I'm i remember at before it, gta that happened yeah the gta 5 one i'm looking at it now i it's actually good it just had the v logo it's completely black and um it, it like I said, he was saying bad it's braided games but it's also limited edition strategy guide so I wonder if it is just a slightly different style of book anyway, and maybe Brady yeah. Games didn't really want yeah. to do it. Because they do it for everything. I remember they did, uh, Modern Warfare 2 I bought one of these things for, and it is literally just the, that textbook kind of you do this, and then you do this, and then you get given this, and then you do that. And, and that's mostly it. So I wonder if they're going more with like just the overall, overall world. Yeah. Well, hinting maybe they are going to be hinting because like as rockstar said there's different outcomes to different missions and i believe in the newswire statement it did say that it was like a brief overrun of missions so they're not going to be saying if you do this this will happen i think it might actually hint to us like there's one alternative and then there's another alternative and stuff like that and um i know we're going to be getting a lot of behind the scenes stuff i think the character art gallery is talking specifically about how they designed the characters behind the scenes when they came up with concept art. And I'll be really interested to see how that plays out. I've always been interested in behind the scenes stuff for like GTA and Red Dead Redemption. It's always cool to see the mind behind the, yeah. you know, the game itself. Here's just a question for you. Um, I'm not too sure, but whoever has the GTA 5 art book, have they ever shown behind the scenes like character motion or anything like that? Like motion capture? Motion capture, sorry. Yeah, within the studios. If so, there's one tiny thing you can see on the Rockstar website. If you go to their job section, there's a section for game testing. And the only piece of motion capture you can see there is someone in a suit. And also you can see like how that translates to GTA 4, I believe. But I don't think they've ever shown us any fo- like footage from behind the scenes or any photos. The, the, the most we ever usually see or hear about that sort of thing is like video of people in the sound studio talking and you'll hear like a common line from like the game but they don't usually do that for for gta and stuff they did it for red dead but they didn't do it for the game they did it for the music and that is a video worth watching i swear to god anybody what listen to this go to youtube at, at the end of this video and go and look at behind the scenes for red dead redemption's music and you will be amazed at like the level of work that went into that like you actually see people yeah. playing all those really strange guitars. You know when you get to like Rattlesnake Hollow and it's like, <laughs> like, yeah, like that is a dude with a piece of metal in his mouth just flicking it. Like, <laughs> and there's cool, all sorts yeah. of crazy stuff like that. So like, you know, hopefully we'll get that stuff again because I just the music just made it brilliant. 
I really yeah, hope like guys it, like Woody Elm return because I saw exactly what video or it was a series of videos. It was like two or three parts, um, and yeah. I saw it the other week, and I was I was so blown away by it. I was like, wow, because it's it's not just like you step into this area of the map and it plays this music. It's like they these guys spent all this time to create strings of different events to match emotion. So it's like if you're just exploring a new area for the first time, you'll hear a certain set of sounds. Whereas if you're getting into a gunfight, it's a totally different vibe of music. And it's it's always different, which is really cool. I mean, obviously, you'll end up hearing all of it eventually. But just how much variation they did is really mm-hmm. incredible. So I'm, they, I'm they, hope something like that returns. That'll be sweet. They, they also made it for... Um so that it's, I the thing I found because I don't know very much about music and writing and playing of course like so it was really interesting when they were explaining how they did that so like it builds up so that you like see you're in an area and and it plays a certain uh, track and then you jump on a horse and it doesn't change it it just adds more on top of it but in order for it to work together they had to record it at the same speed or whatever so all the music is played at the same pace it just so that they can blend it on top of each other so like you're jumping on the horse then you start uh maybe you've got the law enforcement coming after you well there's another track that goes over the top and before long you've got five or six different pieces of music playing at the same time and it just it's on so on the fly it's unreal but for a game made in 2010 like that was incredible great game changing stuff super uh, complex yeah. uh, there's uh... go on man no, I was just going to say that um, in terms of the actual guide itself, I think this is going to be the first book that we get where we get to see some behind the scenes stuff. But with GTA Vice City, again, toning into the audio part of it, as Rue said, there is a video on like, on YouTube. It's quite low quality of Vice City where they actually show some of the actors in the studio. But as far as I'm concerned, that's the last time we ever really got a glimpse of the inside of any of the behind the scenes work, which was kind of cool. I'd recommend that video as well if anyone can find it. I definitely mm-hmm. got to look it up. The last thing I know, the one, because I haven't seen the Vice City one, um, you know, we've seen the GTA 5 characters, I think, doing some, I don't, it, maybe it wasn't behind the scenes, but it was interviews, I guess, before the game released that came out after. Uh, but the last one that I saw of any behind the scenes stuff, which really wasn't even Rockstar, it was Team Bondi, was for L.A. Noir, because that's when oh, yeah. motion capture yeah. really started to become huge for Rockstar. I mean, Rockstar produced it, it didn't have much... I mean, they, they helped develop it because I heard Team Bondi really was a crappy company to work with. But mm-hmm. Yeah, they are, apparently. Loads of bad stuff came about Team Bondi. I think they've shut down now because of how bad it was there. Yeah, not paying employees. And and it wasn't even I... just like, oh, we, we can't afford to give you a bonus. It's like, you've been working for three months now and we haven't given you a single paycheck. But we expect That's... you to finish this game yeah. on time. Like. <laughs> That what? stuff never took off, did it? I think it proved to be too much more work. Too much too much work and not enough payoff. Like LA Noir, it worked. The motion capture stuff, like it really worked. But I, th- I they never translated it across to uh, like GTA 5, the full motion capture, I mean. Like mm. even now, it's still like they motion cap most of it and then add in the uh, the effects layer, like to, to animate stuff like yeah, they it's motion cap the movements, but L.A. Noir it. had that huge focus on facial features just because it was, yeah. you know, investigative and detective work and things like that. Yeah. So you need to see if people were lying and things like that. Yeah, so they, they still haven't transitioned fully to it because it, it's just too difficult. Like, they literally had to make sets up mm-hmm. for that stuff and, like, transfer all of it yeah. over. Um, however, yeah, it it's coming. It's on its way because James Cameron, uh, working on Avatar 2, They've had to develop motion capture that can work underwater. That's interesting. Yeah, because they they got it so that it's underwater and that they can film underwater and have it captured and put it straight in. So they're getting there. So that we'll have it at some point. But for games, it's really? just too much at the moment. Yeah, it's a fascinating feature. Totally, definitely. There is one for GTA Five actually. I think it was Stephen Ogg, you know, the guy who plays Trevor saying that coming back onto what you said about making up the sets there is an interview with him where he says about he calls his character an avatar and apparently rockstar got annoyed with him at that but he was basically just briefly outlining how when they were doing the motion capture they had to physically build the sets like if trevor's walking into his trailer that isn't just like a platform it's like a complete trailer built out of just plastic ornaments and things like that to make sure it was accurate i just found that really interesting it's quite difficult to do it's so i mean really it's they spend so long doing it because they very often then have to go over the top again and go back to the sound studio 
to like talk over it because of course they the the sets are designed for visuals and motion capture not necessarily um you know sort of 7.1 surround sound audio so they're gonna go over and do it again in the set it's so much work man like video game characters like people like those three guys that did gta 5 i guarantee you when they were told that they didn't have to do any more for dlc they were happy I can't, because it's thousands of hours of work in sound studios and motion. Honestly, it's so much work. Yeah, yeah they were actors and voice days... actors at the same time. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, sorry. No, I was just going to say, I don't think people these days appreciate the work that goes into the games. Like, you don't realize and see behind the scenes how much effort is actually put into it at the end of the day. So just for them time. to criticize it. <laughs> yeah. Fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Fix it. Uh, when your character stumbles on a twig and he goes, oh, oh. someone stood in a sound studio and recorded that noise. <laughs> like when you fall from the skyscraper and Michael's there going, Aah. like they had to stand and film that. That was a day's work for someone to stand there grunting. Oh, you know, some AD was sitting there like, I need a little bit more emphasis, you know, from the nostrils. I don't think it was quite, like, throaty enough. Like, I need you to do it again. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Crazy. And Did then you had people water? listening to that to, like, remaster mm. it in the studio. <laughs> yeah. The thousands of hours of getting that right. And then, like, attaching that to the code that triggers it. So, like, if something happens, play this sound. Like, that's just, it's insane levels of stuff. Like, it's crazy. Definitely a lot of detail. But, yeah, I'd, I'd love to what see we things about the back. Hmm. The strategy guide just got released by Rockstar. Well, I mean, what does everyone think that actually means? I mean, we had the T-shirts, the guide. They've asked us to pre-order the game with no information really coming out. We don't even know anything about the online yet, but they're asking us to pre-order the Ultimate Edition, which is all online focus before a certain end date. I mean, surely that means news is right around the corner, right? I mean... It has to be. I mean, that's one thing, especially... I mean, I was kind of bummed because I was live streaming when... Um, a user by the name of Junior, he came into the stream and he said, hey, um, the pre-order bonus of the treasure map, that was extended to August 15th. It was leaked by Xbox. And I and people yeah. have been coming on my stream being like, new news released. And they always fool me because I got to go on Twitter and the Newswire. And I'm always like, well, you guys duped me. But so I, I didn't believe it at first. And I checked. I was like, wow, this guy's right. So I almost thought like, I mean, I was hoping that gameplay or just some type of news would have been released before the 31st because that's when we all expected the pre-order bonuses to expire. Obviously, this extension mm -hmm. is planned by Rockstar. Um, you know, this they didn't just decide to extend it by two weeks. This was their plan all along, but we didn't know that. So I think, I mean, it has to be, obviously we have to see something before the 15th when these, uh, when the treasure map pre-order bonus expires. I'm just hoping it's big enough yeah, to yeah. kind of live up to what everyone's expecting. Cause now, more than ever, I think people are more hyped to see something. I mean, after the third trailer, everyone wanted gameplay, but it's been a quarter of a year now coming up. So we need... 2nd of soon. August, apparently. 2nd <laughs> of August is when they're having their investors call. And I know when they have their investors call, that generally means some information is literally either two weeks prior or two weeks post that event. So um, I thought that was quite a big clue. Someone posted that on Reddit. I don't know how accurate that is, but I know they do do these investor calls where they do release information around that time. So maybe they're getting ready to do that and market the game finally. So we'll finally get to see more news coming out weekly or something like that, surely. Yeah, uh, it's, it's not always the case that they do. I mean, 2012 for GTA 5, right around Max Payne's time, they had one of those Take-Two conference calls. Mm. And they were talking about how well Max Payne's doing. And then GTA 5 got one line. Um, it's in development by Rockstar North, etc. It should be expected to be huge, blah, 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 blah. And everyone claps and went away. And then, like, we were all freaking out. And then, like, nothing. Radio silence again for ages. Uh, it's so, I mean, yeah. with saying we've got no news, we've had lots of news this month for Red Dead. Just, just nothing, nothing that we actually want. Like, we want gameplay. We, we want to see this thing in action going crazy. <laughs> Not that, but they've been marketing it. Like, they have last night with the whole book because we're all here talking about the game we you know it's they mark it very well it's just we don't see anything more you know substantial for ages yeah, which yeah. is a damn shame i'd be satisfied with no screenshots to be honest 
Just Me something too. new. I'm I really hoping this experience. time around that we see something oh. substantial like you were talking about, though. Because even though they could just say, like, oh, it's in development, it's expected to be big, etc. You know, this is coming up. The game's going to release, actually, in two days, it'll be um, the three-month mark until it releases. So, the fe- like, we're getting close to release, so we need to see something, I would say, pretty major. Um, yeah. And also just the fact that they can bring some type of information to their... Um, to their shareholders, you know, the major, you know, the board of directors and say, hey, or at least take two's board and say, like, hey, this is kind of our plan moving forward. This is how we're going to execute on it. This is the expected result. We've been driving up hype over the recent months with the trailers, and now it's time to push forward to really get started on our marketing to make sure we control the market as much as possible, which I, you know, I would expect them to do, but we never know. They've got loads of online details to release as well. I mean, when you look at the actual map of what was still left to be revealed, they've done the shirts. Well, they've they've announced them and they've been leaked. They've done the guide. I mean, I mean, they haven't done anything really about the online. And I know it's a single player driven game, and obviously single player is their main focus. But you know, with three months left, I mean, my prediction would be that August will be for more single player information, and then maybe September online, and then in October, I don't know, maybe it's too late, but maybe that's when gameplay will come. I mean, I know we all hope that that will be sooner, but I'm just really struggling to find the structure that they're going to use from this point onwards. I, I know it's Rockstar's strategy to leave things quite late and surprise us, but I do kind of start thinking to myself, they are kind of lacking at the moment. I mean, we've had tons of news, I know we have, but... There's been nothing substantial there that would solidify anyone buying these pre-orders. And I'm starting to think that the reason it was extended till uh, August the 15th for these pre-order bonuses is because Rockstar's about to release something. I mean, there's got to be a reason, right, for them to extend that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I don't know about you guys, but there's just a weird feeling in the air, like just around Rockstar in general. I think yeah, we're all just yeah, getting impatient. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, like exactly. not like angry impatient, but just like, you know, some, like something to satisfy us. Has curiosity. To kind of yeah, curiosity, exactly. Yeah, we want to see more about this game. It's going to be... Uh, it could be Rockstar's best title, but it probably won't sell as well as GTA Five. Then again, it could do. Yeah. But it just depends, yeah, really. When, uh, when did the GTA Online trailer come out? Or It came out August... Uh, August 9th. No, sorry. July 9th was uh, this just gameplay trailer in general. August... Like, the first two weeks of August it came out. Because they teased it at the end of the gameplay trailer. And that's when the character was sitting in his apartment. And they're like, we'll talk about GTA Online in the future. And you see, like, a jet flying by. And it's like, oh, my God. Yeah. But yeah. who knows? We're that gonna... was crazy. I was so hyped for that. Like, just seeing all the names pop up, I was like, whoa. This is going to be big. Yeah, it was amazing, man. And it's like, it gets to that point where you're like, you're not jealous. But you're like, someone in the world right now is playing this game. And the other day, a few weeks ago, I was up in Edinburgh myself and I was uh, passing the Rockstar North offices and I saw all these guys coming out. They were like 20 years old. They were like 30 years old. And I was just thinking, you guys in there have been playing Red Dead all day. And I just I wish I could have, you know, got some more information out of them. I mean, I tried to speak to a few of them, but you know how they're like. They're always quite secretive about what they do. But it's just I'm just so excited. I think uh, anticipation is definitely getting ahead of me. But what I was going to say also is that if there is a gameplay trailer, how do you reckon it is going to be structured? Because I thought it would be single player trailer then online, or are they going to combine them? I mean, I don't know really what I want to see, but I definitely want to see some NPC interactions. I want some more information on that for sure. Yeah, I want to see more of the interaction. It, it sounds very interesting, like in how the world is going to be like a live and breathing world for once. Like if you look back at any other Rockstar title that involved NPCs, even GTA Five, like the NPCs are so dead. They're just there, like, to show, and they're not really doing anything, but it sounds very interesting what they're doing for Red Dead, for sure. Yeah, well, like, the way the NPCs interact with you, apparently if you beat someone up or you rob someone, if they see you again, they'll remember you. Apparently the sheriffs will actually patrol the city and the town, and if you start a fight, they won't just shoot you straight away. Like in GTA, they're like, oh, you knock someone's coffee out of their hands, shotgun to the face. And it's like, geez, I mean, you know, but in Red Dead 2, apparently they're going to be so much more intelligent. And that's something I'm really, really excited to see. Yeah, like even if you you wander into a town and then you have like some NPCs like whispering your name, like say, oh, God, it's Arthur. He's in the town and they're just like talking amongst themselves about you. I think that would be very interesting to have something like that. For sure. I wonder how that trailer is going to go. Sorry, I have 
I'm still here. I've, I've just been dished up some dinner, so I'm going to be. I'll mute my mic when I'm not talking. Ooh, um, the hardest thing to do is to is to code good AI because it has to be so smart for it to be believable. Like if you remember GTA 4, the police would literally like if you turn your sirens on, everyone would immediately start slamming on their brakes. Like they'd stop <laughs> yeah. in the middle of wherever they are. They just stop. And then in GTA 5. You're driving along, you put your, your sirens on, and they've gone the other way. They now just throw themselves across the flipping cliff just because you, you, you're you behind them. They, like, throw themselves out of the way. So it's like the hardest thing to do is to get that balance where it's believable. So now you're talking about mm -hmm. having, like, people talk to each other and, like, have, like, memory. It'd be people. I mean, if they do it, they'll set, like, a new benchmark. Like, it'll be insane. You know, like it's people like Skyrim because they think oh, Skyrim did a good job of it. It's like Red Dead's probably trying to go a couple steps further again. Like mm. it should be insane. Maybe it will be exclusive to Red Dead 2 in that case because that's a really, really good point. I've never really thought of it like that, but that's just kind of opened my mind because with GTA, they've got NPCs to deal with, police to deal with. They've got cars. They've got how things interact with a huge city and so many elements. But in a, in a Western game where the only real things you have to code is I mean, you know, they don't have to code vehicles or how they drive and behave when they're driving. I feel like because there's a significantly less amount of, you know, there's less quantity that they have to focus on. That's kind of why they're able to drive so much ambition into these NPCs. And I'm really excited because I feel like Red Dead 2 may be an exclusive for that sort of detail. You know, when GTA 6 arrives, I know that's a bold statement. It's probably not going to come for a few years. I don't know if they're going to be able to recreate what they do in this title just simply because it's kind of like... You know, this world's going to be huge and so much vegetation and trees and so much life in this world because there's so much less on the hardware to focus on. And so that's why I'm really excited as well to see how this is going to stand out from other future titles as well and almost make, you know, game of the year. Mm -hmm. I, think... I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Go on, mate. Now, I know this is off topic, but I don't know about you guys, but I find like in GTA 5 with the NPCs, especially the cops, like you don't get a chance at all. Like they just shoot you. And that's it. Like in GTA 4, I know they pointed the gun and they actually gave you a chance to get down on your knees. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I thought that was very good. Like, I don't really like the, the interaction in GTA 5 at all. And I know Red Dead's a different game, but I think it would be cool, like, if you actually, you know, had something more, you know, as we said about the NPC interaction, more like intelligence involved. I think that's the way forward. But I just so said, many find it. Yeah. Sorry, no, yeah, I yeah. didn't interrupt you. But like in Western movies, you get like this whole posse of sheriffs coming up to you and they're like, we got word that you guys have just robbed a bank. And they're like, yeah, well, it wasn't us. And like they actually exchange conversation and they exchange remarks. And sometimes they're gritty to each other. Sometimes they're, you know, stubborn with each other. But they don't always resort to a gunfight. And that's what I'd love to see more of, you know, in the modern day in a game like GTA. Again, yeah, I may be going off topic. The police just point and shoot. But in Red Dead with that... It, Rockstar are always inspired by the movies and that's something we see quite often and I'm excited to see how they maybe integrate these NPCs being intelligent and how we can resolve situations without resorting to violence straight away and some of the conversations we can have and the reactions we can choose to have you know oh sorry sheriff I didn't mean to do that or that wasn't me or we can just straight pull out our shotgun and shoot them that variety is what's going to make the game so exciting for me yeah, I'm yeah. really excited because I think we could be heading in that direction. And, and kind of like you said, like GTA, it has all the buildings to render and the cars and everything like that. There's, It's so much more hardware and resource intensive on that side. Whereas with Red Dead, they have the vegetation. You know, they have some buildings and it's going to be interesting to see how St. Denis works. But just in terms of that, they can focus so much more on the AI, like you said. So that's going to be nice because we're going to be, well, at least, you know, I'm speculating on this, but... Rather than feeling like we live within the confines of the game, which, you know, at the end of the day, we still will be, at least the player's going to feel like they have more control over their choices when yeah. they play. And so it's not just like awesome. if we, you know, rob rob gold from some guy, you know, who's or rob a cash register at the general store and the sheriff comes over and tries to talk to us. It's not just run away and he chases us or shoot him and run away and then we're getting chased by everyone it's we can you know maybe walk away and he's like hey come back here etc at least we can try and you know make our own path in the game to, to a certain extent and that's exciting I want to, same with the camp 
mm-hmm. isn't it? The same with the camp, where the camp constantly moves. Like if we rob a bank and we fail that mission, uh, as Rue said in the previous video, I believe he was saying uh, from a leak or someone mentioned how missions don't fail and they don't operate the same way. Like if you fail a mission, you get option A and B and C and you can choose different ways. But also this time, if we if we rob a bank and it gets botched and we don't do it successfully, that doesn't mean we then go back to the camp and redo it because then that might mean the law are now on to us. So we have to move the camp, go and do some other heists in another part of the map. And then ultimately, it might be a few weeks or months in the game till we get to do that again. And that's really going to add a whole sense of risk and reward to it. And I love risk and reward, especially with the way how horses now, if they die, they die. The stats get reset. You have this whole wide branch of stuff that you have to take into consideration rather than just blindly running in and shooting. And that's really what's going to make the gameplay experience really, really like, you know, it's going to be fresh for everyone. Not the same experience every time. Mm. No, sure, yeah. I wonder if they've, if it's more of a case if we're talking about the AI has never really been developed. I wonder if they've never been able to focus on the AI as much because of all the other stuff that they've had to do, like the the big cities and the the, the animation and and all the other stuff that they've got in GTA. I wonder if they haven't really had time to do it properly. Like they, it was, of course, leaps and bounds, you know, ahead. But there's not that much of a difference between GTA 4 and GTA 5's AI. They're all very much the same a little bit smarter you know the big difference is like the police um they now work on a site-based system as, a, as opposed to like just a general area so they made waves there but it didn't change a huge amount about the game i wonder if because they're not having to worry about all that other stuff that they for the first time been able to actually really nail down some ai changes you know in in in, in red dead that would be pretty cool i think they they will have made a lot of changes because they haven't had to do all the cities and all that craziness. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's been on their mind. You know, they've always pro- they probably for a while since probably GTA 4 they've been like, we want to hammer down on the AI and make that more immersive for the player. But like you said, now they've had now they have a perfect chance to do it because they don't have all those other tasks to focus on. Um, yeah i think the main downfall with them was the three protagonists great great feature to have in a game first ever open world game to feature multiple protagonists well no no probably not but that's a lie but you know in this sort of way and i think the three protagonists was a great idea it was brand new it was fresh but i feel like if they had a focused on one or two mm-hmm. main characters the story would have both been richer because i found the ending of gta 5 very very poor compared to what rockstar have previously been capable of it was almost rushed but also the fact that they integrated three protagonists i feel like they focused on that more than the world and with red dead redemption 2 they've obviously stated that there is only one protagonist and they've had a lot um, more time to to work on that and that may be confirmed later down the line we may find out that there is two protagonists maybe john marston is playable we don't know but I definitely would agree that the fact that they focused on more than one protagonist definitely took a lot of their uh, potential out of the AI and stuff in GTA 5, for sure. Yeah. I, d- I didn't really agree with the three characters a lot. Like, I didn't get the idea that I had like three different personalities, but like I just didn't agree with it. You, you know, as you said, it took the focus out of the game, sort of, and the, the, the ending of the game was quite poor. Like, you just got to look back at Vice City or San Andreas. Did just Dean turn into a robot for anybody else just then? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, oh, it sounded like Wally watch. for a second then. Oh my god, <laughs> really? <laughs> Probably just a Is it back page. now? I'm just wondering if it's Oh back. yeah, it's back. It's yeah. fine now. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> my apologies. Dean opened it's up a crowd window. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to see how the uh, the coming back to the strategy guide and how the different missions are stringed along and how all of those different varies like uh, the outcomes that we can have. I'm wondering if that will be online as well because um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but there was someone who reached out to me quite a while ago. I don't know if it was real or not, but they said that NPC interactions will now be coming to online as well. And I don't know if that will play out, how that will play out, but I'm really excited to also see if that is going to be integrated to online because then that will really set the barrier between an MMO and just an open world online game that's co-op, you know. Very true. I think it'll be there to some extent, but I think it'll be dumbed down in a way. Like It's almost like how you see in you know, GTA 4, Red Dead Redemption, GTA 5, how just if you notice the detail on the map, it is like the quality goes down very slightly just because you're now handling this with a bunch of different players on an online server internationally. Like that's so much data to be sent across simultaneously to all these players. So they have to do some certain adjustments, right? Um, so I think yeah, you'll we'll see them not necessarily cutting corners, but making choices on which features of the AI to include that we've seen the single player. Mm-hmm. 
but I do hope it is there to like the most extent to where you kind of still have control over the environment and you can craft your own situations. If you go into the single player for GTA five and you just play like you slap bang in the middle of the city and just look around for about five minutes, don't do anything, no guns, no running around, just, just wander around and look, you will see an enormous difference between that in single player and GTA online. It's like online world. For a start, the helicopters, planes, uh, jets, and everything are flying around up in the air. You know that ma the really, really big plane that you've got. The GTA Five. Yeah, it's, uh, it yeah. circles around the outside of the map all the time. The big Boeing thing, like that's there. Um, like you just notice that there's a lot more going on as a, as a standard in GTA Five in comparison to online. So you probably find that will be true with Red Dead as well. There'll be more happening in the 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 single player yeah. because rendering oh, right. that sort of thing in, exactly. info, like you'd end up with lagginess if you ended up having to render all of that all the time plus whatever people are doing as well well it, with uh, red dead redemption 2 one of the most exciting things as well is also how if you lose an item of clothing like your hat apparently you can go back and, and reclaim that hat from like someone who may have picked it up or stolen some items from you and stuff like that and i think that's quite exciting as well yeah it adds definitely it adds depth into the game it's a, yeah, it would be a really cool gameplay feature, but again, yeah, it's, it, even that like bit of detail would really change the game dramatically. <laughs> For sure. Just having that little bit of detail in the game, it will change the game, and especially the gameplay as well. But it's sort of like GTA Online, not really to that extent, but if somebody stole your car, you can obviously go back and claim your car from the other player or just lock them out of your car. <laughs> yeah, you could just deny someone access. I wonder how that'll yeah, happen with horses in online. Sorry, you do not have access to this player's horse. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. Though. Yeah. That would be you have to be able to steal someone's horse, by the way. Like, oh, you guarantee. Can't, that would, you can't, yeah, that would you be can't the biggest. You pull that off. <laughs> you can't be like, sorry, but you're not allowed to get on this horse. It's like, no, I'm getting on the horse. What are you going to do Maybe about they it? They take the saddle off. Can you imagine I, that? Maybe Rockstar Games are like, oh, you get off your horse, your saddle you, disappears. You start Who pulling knows? on that, that nag's mane. You just you, you jump on the back. Like, <laughs> Work your damn you, nag. Yeah, you lasso horses. They don't have things on it. You'll be fine. You, you can take horses. But it's pro yeah, it's, I mean, that's the thing. With online, it might not be the same. It might only be a single-player thing where you have to be connected to the horse. You know, And maybe it doesn't work for online because of the, the, the fact that People love spawn killing. Like, might not be the same. The thing I'm looking forward to is getting my flying unicorn with Pegasus miniguns and homing rockets and shooting yeah. some people down. And if DLC comes out, that costs five million euro bucks. Yeah, there you go. No, I'm just joking. You never know. <laughs> anyway, so to transition into the last topic of this of this podcast, um, I kind of wanted to get your guys' opinions on what we can see from Rockstar going forward with Red Dead Redemption Two leading up to release. I know, Bandit, you touched on the gameplay trailer and kind of how, if it's, you know, questioning if it's going to be different than what we've seen with the GTA V trailer. And personally, I think we're going to see longer takes of Arthur Morgan in different situations with the AI to see how that mechanic works rather than just seeing him run and gun in a bunch of different situations. Um, but, you know, we could see something totally different. We also don't know if we're going to have multiplayer and the online version teased at the end of the trailer, if it's going to be intertwined if they're not even going to mention it and we're going to go through another news drought for a month and then they're just going to drop multiplayer information on us, we don't really know. I'd hope not. The yeah. one thing I do think about their marketing plan so far is they've they followed GTA 5 for the most part compared to like Red Dead Redemption 1 where we saw over two hours of gameplay trailers and commentary and all that stuff before the game even released and we had so much to talk about. I think we're going to see... Rockstar be even more scarce on dropping news for us than GTA 5 was. So I don't think they're going to be any more lenient on giving more news the closer we get. We're just going to see even less than we've ever seen before in the history of this company. That's true. I think we should all like um, <clears throat> almost make our predictions for the trailer. I mean, I'm going to call it now. I'd like to come back to this video and go, wow, I was accurate. But like my predictions for this gameplay trailer, if we get one, is that we're going to have a single player and a multiplayer difference. So I believe in the single player trailer. The things we're going to see mostly are Deadeye and how that changes now, because as Rockstar have confirmed, we can track down animals with Deadeye, I believe. And I believe there's a new stat called the environmental awareness uh, skill. 
So I'm going to be really interested to see how that one plays out as well. And uh, of course, NPC interactions. But one last thing that I think that is almost necessary to have in that trailer, if they do release a gameplay trailer, how the, the camp works and how the, the camp moves around and things like that. But um, that's just my predictions. And I, I would I would predict as well that the online trailer is definitely going to come out after that. But I wouldn't be able to say what's featured in that because we simply don't really know what's going to be in the online yet i don't know if it's going to be like gta online or anything like that but that's just my my rough ideas anyway mm -hmm. i think we're going to get <clears throat> i don't think we're going to get gameplay for a while I, I, I know we all you know people don't like that i think we're going to see more about arthur it'll be an arthur morgan trailer where it focuses on him for two minutes or like five minutes even like it could very well be just a full-blown thing because I think we don't know enough about him yet. We don't know anything about it. Like before, think about it. Before we started seeing gameplay and stuff, we heard a lot about who John was and what was going on. We at the moment only really know about the gang, and even them, we don't know much about who they are. Like we know some of their names, but we don't really know any of their backstory. So I think before we can see gameplay, really, we kind of need to know about him. So I think somewhere along the line, even if it's not like. You know, even if it's really close to gameplay, I think we'll see some stuff about Arthur first. Yeah, I want to. I want to learn more about Arthur himself. Um, Arthur. 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 You Arthur said Arthur cur Morgan. earlier as well. What is a cur, Dean? A what? A cur. It's a car. A car. I never said that, did I? <laughs> you should cut. You should cur. Oh, I'm, I'm right. busting I, I your balls, Mister Dean. Yeah, you're okay, Dean. You're all right. Bollocks. But. <laughs> I'm just poking fun, Mr. Dean. It's all good. Thanks, real buddy. It's all right. This yeah. is all part of the let's get Dean, uh, I don't know, a red face. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's been live streaming a lot recently. Anyone who yeah, just... hasn't checked out Red Dead 2 videos live streams, check out his channel. He's got some sick streams going on. I'm still improving them, Mr. Hazard. Hey, it's all part of the process. We're all improving. You're ahead of me. I haven't done a single live stream yet. If I'm being totally honest, I have no idea what I'm doing. YouTube said to me, hey, try live streaming. And I was like, okay, I'll click this red button. And I have a feeling I live stream my face for like five seconds. I was going to your face. <laughs> <to> <laughs> laptop. It's like, what is yeah, going I'm, on? Yeah, I'm new to all that. Live streams with all of us together when the game releases. That's something we should definitely do together. Get some of our um, viewers and friends in here as well. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, ton of different stuff. I mean, we have a lot to look yeah. forward to. We still have a couple months time to pass before this game comes out so we can make do with Red Dead Redemption 1. Obviously, when Red Dead Redemption 2 releases, we're all going to be blown away by what we can do. And it's all going to be new. So that's exciting. But um, yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I mean, this is definitely one of the longer episodes we did, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Obviously, we have our special guest Red Bandit here today and hopefully he returns for future episodes. If you're watching on my channel or Hazard, then definitely... Drop a like and subscribe. I'll have all these guys linked down below. iru 399 Red Bandit, and Red Dead 2 videos. They'll all be linked down in the description. And um, if you're watching on any of their channels, we kind of... We, we want to do this more. So if you guys want to say your goodbyes. Bye. That should just uh, be the outro. You should just yeah, leave it see, that, yeah. to be honest with you. <laughs> right, to the pub. No. <laughs> it's been it's been really fun. I've enjoyed joining you guys today. Definitely you can expect to see the upload on my channel. And uh, definitely will be featured in future episodes. Excited for the later, more information this week, actually. If there is any, we'll have to get straight on it as soon as we can. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's been good. It's been a good episode. I was, I was concerned about how it might happen with four of us on here because, of course, we're all ask you know we all want to talk because we're all alpha talk because it's what we do but it's worked all right a couple of times we all talked over each other but it's just it just happens it's, it's just so much to talk about so yeah it's been good yeah. i've enjoyed it yeah we're, we're all having a good time we're all having yeah. a good time so yeah, if you happen to be on my page you want to go on over to the others you know where to find them all right and uh yeah can i uh talk now yeah <laughs> yeah go for it dude. <laughs> all right awesome um i gotta admit it is actually really strange for the first time having banda here but it's awesome because i'm so used to listening to bandit's videos and they're really good so if you guys haven't you know checked out bandit make sure you do so as well awesome guy it's great to have you here pal thank you very much i remember us speaking not so long ago it's nice to be with you all guys and uh, i'll definitely upload this and link all of your channels in the description if you're watching on my channel 
Fantastic. All right. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching, and we'll talk to you soon. Adios.